Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Mad Dragons podcast. Um, proudly sponsored by Complete Warehouse Solutions. So, need any warehousing um, tips or, or um, pointers? Go see um, Jeff and the team at Six Commerce Drive, Lake Illawarra. So, welcome to the panel tonight. We're joined here by Rob, Big T, Coco, a little bit later, and Hasman, and also Muzz a little bit later as well. So we head into our Easter Saturday clash against the high-flying Manly Seagulls. Head-to-head, -head with the Dragons and Manly about 34 games, and the Dragons have won 22 to Manly's 12. So Hasman, take us through our first team to play at Wynn Stadium for 2024. Yep, and this is pretty much the best 17 that we'll be able to put on the park uh, this season. Uh, fullback is Tyrell Sloan. Zach Lomax and Michaeli Rovala on the wings. Centers are Moses Tooley and Jack Bird. 5'8 is Carl Flanagan and the back is Ben Hunt. The forwards are Frankie Molo and Blake Laurie. Uh, Molo uh, coming back from suspension, which is good. Uh, Jacob Little is uh, the hooker. Uh, the second rowers are Luciano Leibola and Gaby Silla. Tom Eisen, who uh, is the lock forward. And on the interchange, we've got Jesse Marsky, Jack DeBellin, Jaime Sele making his first appearance this season, and Raymond Paytel and Aaron Up. Thank you, Hasman. Okay, we'll move into our... We've discussed our opposition... Sorry, we've discussed our team for now. And then, right, um, we'll move over to Big T, and he'll um, run us through the um, opposition team. And also introduce our special guest. You got the slide there, Jess? Yeah, I'm doing it. We're going to run the start. Anyway. This is PG. Poor kid. Well, good day, Dragons fans. I'm Big T. And this is behind enemy lines. Um, before I bring in our guests, I'll run through. I'll run through the. the um, Run through the manly team. You've got Tommy Trewoods at the back, Vega on one wing and Paolo on the other. Uh, Cola and Garrick in the centres, Luke Brooks and Cherry Evans. Paseca, Crocker, Aloye, Holome, Olakowatu, Ben Trebojevic and Jake Trebojevic locks the scrum. Lawton, Woodell, Ethan Bullimore, Nathan Brown, Jake Arthur's 18th man, Seabold's the coach. We'll bring our guest in now, Adam, Adam um, Hockley, is it? And, um, yep. You're from the Northern Beaches, yeah? Yeah, mate. Uh, freshwater Northern Beaches. Uh, been around there my whole life. Whole life. Been a Manly fan your whole life? Whole life. Since uh, whole first life, Brooke nice. game my dad took me down to. Nice, nice. And that would have only been a few years ago, I'd say. Yeah, uh, 2007, <laughs> Manly, Melbourne. <laughs> like 2007, Jesus. I was too old by then. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, You've always been a Manly fan. Um. We didn't, none, neither of us has made the eight last year. That was a, a terrible year for us. 
But we've actually played 34 times, and the Dragons have won 22 of those 34 games. So we're on top of you a bit there. Um, Mally have only won two games in the last 10 at Wollongong. Um, yeah. The last one was last year. They beat us last year down there. But before that, it was 2003. Um, what, what is it about Wollongong that Manly don't like going down there? And, um, yes, what, what do they like about it? Oh, I think I think it's just a, a just get, getting out of getting out of. We already struggle going past the Harbour Bridge. I think going a bit further further south is a bit of a struggle for us. But no, we've we've had a terrible record down there. But um, yeah. I think it's we we have a pretty good crowd at Brookvale and down at Wollongong. You have a pretty good crowd as well. And we just we're not yeah. able to hack it. Well, hopefully, we can get a good crowd down there this year. We are poor poor crowd last week, so. Hopefully, yeah. Wollongong can make it up to us. And amazingly, about those wins and losses down in Wollongong, every win, the, play, the team who were leading at halftime won the game. So oh, really? it must be very important to um, to lead at halftime, I think. So just it's a mental game, I think. You're just mentally in other people's um, heads. Yeah. Um, Luke Brooks. At the, at, at the Tigers, he was a tragic. But um, he's come to Manly and he's looking like the goods. Why? Why do you think that's so? Well, it's it's he, he's got the pressure off him now, right? He's got he's got Cherry to lead the team. He can just you can focus on his running game. Uh, it's it's there's there's no the spotlight's not on him. And I watched him I watched him in the trial match where they uh, carved up the Rabbitohs, and he just looked comfortable. He looked he looked like they weight off, weight off his shoulders, ready to play. And he's just got he's got some quality football players around him that. He doesn't need to be on the ball all the time. He yeah. can step back, step in when he needs to, focus on the running game, and really, really just dominate where his strengths are. Do you think he'll step into the halfback role when Cherry Evans does retire? I, I think, I think young, um, young Arthur's will take over. He, he played quite well in the trials and a few good games towards the back of last year. Whether Cherry's final years next year or kicks on. But Arthur's been playing amazing. We've also got um, young Humphreys coming through who can play fullback, 5'8", halfback. Um, it's, he's, he's very dominant on that left side there, Brooks. And I think, I think we've unlocked what's really lets him play well, which is just stepping back. Same as Kieran Foran used to do, have a game manager and just allow him to be off the cuff, ready to go. Mm. And you've got um, Josh Schuster languishing back into Reggie there. there you know, um... Do you expect him to be back, or is he a forgotten figure? It, he, may, he may get a crack a bit later on. Look, talk, talk of the town is if Ben keeps playing the way he's doing, he's, he's get looking close for that uh, state of origin. Olakwaidu is obviously looking quite great as well. He might get an origin spot. So Schuster may get a crack. I, his first game in Reggie's was, was pretty average, but he came back with a strong game last week. Um, maybe a few injuries later in the season or some state of origin, he might get a bit of a crack. Um, yeah. Personally, I'd be playing him 13 and move Jake to the front row yeah. and just have him come on after after either start 13 or come on after 20 minutes, the same as what he used to, and just being that link man in the middle. But I, yeah, think, yeah. I think we'll see a few games out of Schuster and he will impress us when we do see him. But you do have some exciting youngsters coming through. Um, you know, the yeah. Lyle were killing it a while back. so yeah. And they're, they're starting to disperse around the, uh, around the NRL, so... You should be expecting to see some manly juniors coming through with other teams. Um, yeah, so you can't keep them all. Yeah, we we lost the Fino brothers to Tigers, and um, it was uh, it's quite hard to take. But uh, when, when we signed Luke Brooks, I was a bit bit shaky about it. But watching him play now, I'm quite happy with the swap. But yeah, you you can't keep them all. No, that's but, right. Um, and we we got yeah. Tuatabaki and um, Fafita, so we yeah. swapped you him, swapped you them for Aaron Woods. So. Yeah, it's great. Okay, last question. Last question from me. Yep. Will Turbo stay fit all season? Uh he's he's looking watching him at the Parramatta game live the other day, he was looking tired. I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting if we're sitting comfortable later in the year, um, Seabold rest him. Yep. Um, I'm hoping that his body holds up and he doesn't get it. His last two injury injuries have been freak injuries with um the pec and the uh, and the shoulder, so I'm hoping that I'm pretty sure his body's get his body's back to normal now, and his body's pretty fit, and hopefully no freak injuries come through. Yeah, I, I don't mind. I like when you say 
you don't mind Manly. I don't like Manly, but um, not a lot of people do, except for Manly fans. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you've, you've got you've got a sign in the crowd that I absolutely love. Is we hate you too. Yeah, um, I, I love that sign. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love yeah. that sign. Uh, anyone else got questions for uh, Adam? Well, I got your question. It was regarding last Sunday was a high quality game against Parra, probably put the game of the year so far. Yeah. What did what did you take on the um the no try the Jack Dubovitz ruling? Everyone's talking yeah. about that one. The, the, the boy, the boys were pretty. The boys were fatigued that second half coming out. They had about five or ten minutes of good footy after the second half, and then they were fatigued. And it was just, it was showing like you could have picked it from a mile away, Jake. All you need to go was go through the line. Yeah, it's it's hard to watch. It's, for, it, I know it would have hurt Jake more than anyone else on the field or anyone else in the world. Um, but it's by letter of the law, it was a no try. But. It's if we just it's the things we learn from, and I guarantee Jake will never let that happen again. Well, you saw Jake was really upset. He was um, cursing himself and yeah. um, during the game. So he's he's a very passionate boy, um, boy yeah. Jakey, very passionate. He loves it. He loves it. He loves he loves rugby league. Like yeah. I was watching I was watching the fan and Jake, Tom, and Ben were on, and they went through from ninety nine to twenty twenty three or twenty twenty two. Every grand final winner just went through, yeah. just went through. Yeah. Like, they're all freaks, they're all freaks. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I've got something for him, Adam. I'm feeling old, mate, because I think my first game watching the Dragons was 1974 or 75 when I was yeah, in right. school. so yeah, so a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but mate, I, I see you guys have got strike power all over the field. Um, I think your hook is underrated, um, doesn't get much of a mention, but the spine's uh strong. And is it Ola Kalatu? Is that yeah, Ola Kalatu, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely brilliant, mate. Um, the way he busts and he can offload. Uh, big body, you know. I mean, I mean we have got him in our our team as well too. Um, yeah. but yeah, he looks um very strong. Um, you know, but yeah, that's fine, mate. And the hooker, like I said, I, I just don't think he he doesn't seem because we got Tommy there obviously and you got you got Terry Evans and and now Brooks, he seems to not get a mention, but he's yeah. uh, a decent player, and he, he he's got another forty twenty for you as well. Yeah, I think he I think he was up there with uh, leading leading the forty twenties last year. I think he had four. I'm pretty sure he got four last year. Croker's he Probably. stepped in. He, he was a fill in hooker when we um one of our hookers had a little bit of an incident with the law, and we lost our happy chorus house. So he just stepped in out of nowhere and just. He's, he's grown over the years, and he's, he's incredible. He's, he's one of the leaders there now. Um, you, you watch when the when the game when he goes off and has a stint. Um, Carl Lawton comes on. The game just slows down a bit. Croker comes back on in the second half and straightens it all out. We've got another young hooker, um, Gordon Kantung Young, coming through as well, who's quite electric. And I think later in the year you'll see him working off the bench. It'll be quite quite exciting footy. Well, that's the problem we had at the Dragons in years gone past. We had the fastest prop in the game in, in, in uh, Woodsy and yeah. the fastest <laughs> prop in the fight. So, yeah. you know, so yeah. it does uh, make a difference at the hooking position, that's for sure. 100%, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're done there. Is that it? No more questions? Oh, no, good. Doesn't look, doesn't look like. Well, if Jess wants to put up the slides for me, um, this is where I normally take a walk down memory lane. Just uh, yep. press a couple there, Jess. He takes no prisoners, yep. Adam. Take no prisoners, mate. <laughs> we're at Wynn Stadium, round 26. We're going to go right back to 1999, Dragons versus yep. the Manly Warringah Seagulls. Um, you were probably weren't even born then, were you? Uh, I, was, I was about two. Two. Two at, <laughs> uh, two at the time. Referees, Sean Hampstead, there's 13, just under 14,000 people at the stadium. At Wynn Stadium. Yeah. Next slide, please. Yep. The Dragons team was uh, Wes Patton, Blacklock, McGregor, and Ainscray in the centres. Wishart, Mundine, Barrett, Pearson, Mackay, and Smith up front. Tracy, Fitzgibbon, and Bartram was locking the scrum. Lightfall, Thompson, Cooper, and a player called Warren Carney was our number 17. Uh, Coached by David Wade and Andrew Farrow. Um, the Manly side were King, Frew, Torrens, Menzies, Hopperati, Cliffy Lyons, and Jeff Tooby in the halves. Sedaris, Cunningham, and Ebril. Garner, Ebril, uh, Garner and Kosef, Gardner and Kosef. Uh, Hayden, Clara, Adamson and Derdevic on the bench. Peter Sharp was the coach. 
Well, the, fir the first points came from De uh, Jeff Depastuvi mucking around in the in the in the ruck penalty. Wayne Barts from penalty goal. Dragons two 0 The first try came from Wes Patton. Brad McCoy down the, down the blind slide passes passes the black lock with a miracle ball. He puts um, Luke Patton over in the corner. Dragons six 0 There was no Colin Ward, Mark Coyd, Nathan Brown, or Sean Timmons today for the Dragons. Where would you put them anyway? What a team we had back then, 1999, the best team we've ever had, except for 2010. Oh, he's over again, Luke Patton, 20 metres out from zone line, cuts through the defence. Manly, uh, Manly had nothing. They were gone. Um, he cut through, scores the try. Um, Dragons, 12-0. Um, and then Albert Tyron scores one. He wasn't a bad player. 12-4. Remember, he played for the Dragons. He had, he had one year at the Dragons. Up. It's coming up. It's coming up. Oh, then Luke Patton was over for his first half hat trick. Um, did I say Luke Patton? Then 16 4 of the Dragons, the young bull boy boy came from Bulloy, played for the Dragons for a couple of seasons, and then um, went to went to Canterbury Bulldogs. But we can forgive him for that. And then this guy scores again. Oh, oh sorry, mate. He played for the Dragons too. Next slide. <laughs> Albert Torrance scores another try for Manly. Dragons 16 8. I think that's a half-time score, 16. Oh, no, there's a field goal. No, no, that's the Newcastle game. Next slide. Half-time, Manly, Dragons, 68. The second half, Chuck Mundine puts a beautiful ball into the corner and um, Rod Wishart flies through the air, grabs the ball and scores a try. He was playing his last game at Wollongong. It, he started in 1989 with the Illawarra Steelers. Well, Albert Torrance scores his third try for the game. Uh, scores 20 to 12. There's a picture of Albert Torrens in 2020. He won the um, Correctional Services Medal for his um, outstanding work with well, the, uh, the inmates. Yeah, I don't know how that's old 2020, mate. That's 25 years ago. <laughs> Next slide. And here's Andrew Frew. Andrew Frew scores the last try from a nice offload from Hopawati. Uh, Andrew Frew scores a try. Dragons 2018 full, not full time. On a side note, on a side note, Andrew Frew spent 12 months in jail for blackmail and extortion. Um, so I wonder if Albert Torrance spoke to him in jail. I'm not sure. Anyway, that was the game. That's a walk down memory lane and behind enemy lines. I'm Big T, and as I always say, the rest is history. Back to you, Jess. Yeah, thank you, Big T. Thanks, guys. It's the first Thanks time I've done that. Brad, Just um, do you have any? You want to sign off with anything? You, any predictions? Uh, predictions for the game this weekend? Goal line prediction, Adam. Uh, yeah, I, I reckon Manly will get up. Um, I'll be I'll be down at the game with uh, my friends Matt and Tess. They're big Dragons boards to follow the vlog. Um, we'll be down. I reckon Manly twenty six fourteen with Tom Trevojevic final try scorer. Nice, nice, nice. All right, mate. Thanks, Adam, absolute, thanks for coming on. An yeah, absolute yeah. champion Sorry. for coming on. Hopefully we can see you again. Um, That's it. I think we play Manly later in the year and we'll keep Jess, yeah. Jess in contact with you. Easy. Yeah. And when Thanks. you go to the game on the weekend, just watch out for a guy called Jesse from Fig Tree. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's real dangerous. <laughs> I'll I'll keep, keep an eye out. <laughs> yeah, just be careful, mate. Easy done. Thanks, guys. Right. Right. Thanks very much. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for coming on. All right, then. So we'll move on. Uh, We'll move into our next segment of the night where um, our viewers will get a little bit of interaction.
Okay, good evening, guys, and welcome to the um, Ma um, Drags Dragger Trivia for this week. Um, so, my question this evening so, 20 years ago, you may remember that the Dragons completed one of the biggest comebacks of all time against Manly at Cogra. Now, we won the game 36 points to 34 after being behind 34 to 10 with 20 minutes to go. I remember it was a game that we had to win to, I think, play finals footy. Um, that was our first time playing finals footy uh, uh, under Nathan Brown. So my question is tonight, far away in the comments, once you do discover the answer, no Googling either. <laughs> no sure, Googling. Sure I'll know. Sure thing. <laughs> Who scored the, the try that gave us the victory over Manly in that game? Who scored the final try to give the Dragons the victory in that game? He was only just in too. I'm guessing it was the, was it our Kiwi winger? Uh, I can't remember his name. Well, that's Andrew K, you're on there. the money. Andrew K, Crazy. you've got it. Andrew yeah, K, you, you've got the winner. Justin Moore is correct. Crop. A good try too. Wow. That was my um, walk down memory lane last year. Justin Paul. Justin Paul, wow. And who, who, Pretty good memories. It's hard to believe that that happened 20 years ago this year. Yeah, that's incredible. And a lot of fans left too, didn't they, BT? All they, the did, fans they did, they did. The 20 to go, wet. yeah. It was, it was wet yeah. as well. Yeah. Incredible. Anyway, time. Andrew, um, congratulations. You, you've won a prize. So um, if you inbox me your details and I will get that prize out to you. Woohoo! So again, that's that's prizes courtesy of Complete Warehouse Solutions. So go see Jeff and the team at Six Commerce Drive in Lake Illawarra. Call them on four two five seven one nine three zero or o four one seven double two three four zero nine. Yes, Peter V is right, and that is that was Nathan Blacklock's last game for the club. Oh, and then a week later, we played a semi final against Penrith. I remember I was at that game and we unfortunately lost 31-30, one of the one of the best semifinals I've ever seen, actually, to be honest. It was a, it was a great game. And, it was another one of the games we should have won. Yeah, should've. and we, that sadly eliminated us from the competition that year. We lost by one point and we, we um, were first team out of the semifinals. We finished fifth. That was because uh, North Queensland, or Canterbury beat North Queensland or North Queensland beat Canterbury. North Queensland so. finished seventh and they beat Canterbury. They did, that's right. Yeah, I remember that year. I was at the speedway listening to it on the radio, <sighs> crying. I was up at Penrith that game, and I thought we, we didn't deserve to be knocked out. But no, since the Cowboys the won, one. since the Cowboys won, we had yeah. the bit one to drop out. That's right, yeah. Anyway, we'll move on to discussions for our team. So um, a couple of changes that um, Flanner has made this afternoon for, for this game against Manly. Um, Rob, so Jacob Little returns at nine, pushing Jesse Muskie to 14. So how big an inclusion do you think Jacob Little is this week? Oh, massive. I mean, I still think Muskie, uh, he, he can hold his head up high. I thought it was a great debut. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Little is important to us. We go forward. Um, momentum, his ability to know where the players are for the, you know, for passing from dummy half as well too. Set plays, um, and again, you're just just running forward, um, you know, from that position uh, makes a huge difference. So um, we're sort of all about Ben Hunt, and, you know, um, even Tyrell when he plays a good game in the spine. But I think Lou is a play for us, so a much needed in, mate, one hundred percent, much needed in for us. Uh, and nothing against the young guy. Um, I think he's a good player. Uh, and I'm glad that he's still in the squad too. So, um, you know, to come on, I assume, uh, maybe to relieve Little, maybe with a few more minutes because Little's come back from injury, hamstring, I think, Jesse. So maybe he might get a few more minutes in this game, last year. Um, you know, because Little's, Little's um, missed the last, what, game or two games? I can't remember now. No, he played, uh, he played the game against the Dolphins. That's where he got yeah. concussed three so, times. Yeah, so, yeah. Even, just, even just missing that one match. So, uh, But, yeah, no, great inclusion. Obviously, little uh, rating highly, mate. Yep. Um, big T, Jack DeBellin, our most experienced forward, has been relegated to the bench. Are you shocked by this decision? 
No, I think I can see it coming. Um, Jack the Balance, he's slowed down this year. Um, he's another year older. I think it's time for him to move into the front row. And now he's becoming, like what Donnie said the other week, he's becoming a bench a bench forward. So, yeah, I'll, I saw it coming. Um, I think I did anyway. So, yeah, he was going to come off the bench forever now. And do you, you think this could be a, a sign of him him declining? And he, as you said, he's getting a bit older. Um, it could be his final year in the NRL and at the Dragons. Well, he, 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 he missed three or four tackles last week, and that's unusual for um, Jack DeBellin to miss tackles. So um, slowing down his movement, slowing down. Uh, what is he, 34, 35? He's 33 at the moment. Yeah, he's oh, just turned 33. Yeah. yeah. I think if he moves in the front row and that, that's his job, um, he'll, he'll stay for another year or so. But um, he's not a lock anymore. No, he's just lost that speed. And he, uh, as you said, he's slowing down. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't get another contract after this year. I like, like Donnie said last well the other week, um, he might get a, a bench starting bench player contract. That, that's going to be down on his um, 800, 700,000 he gets now. Yeah. But, but even thinking about that, you know, in hindsight, in the future, we need some big boppers. I mean, you know, Adam Fanua Blake, a pain, a pain ass. We barely need a player like that as a prop. Oh, the balance get the balance yeah. going to bring so much impact off the bench. Oh, definitely not going to be no, funny. I, going to be funny. Um, I just mean in the future, mate. I mean, I, I see that as as maybe a a key player coming in for us. Well, Donnie said in the chat he still expects DeBellin to play the same minutes as he is, if, if he does. Yeah, 45, as, 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 as he does in the starting team. Yeah. It might fire JDB up to being on the bench as well. You know, it might fire him up. Because he missed a few tackles yeah. last week and his, his run meters are, uh, are pretty good, but um, he needs to do more. Yeah, you might watch a bit of the game and, uh, you know, uh, and then seize the opportunity when he comes on. So the, the, the um Flano Flano um at today at today at training he had the um guys focus on their wrestling and their defence. I want both your guys' input on this. Um, is that a thing you, you know, think they need to um have as their priority going forward? Now that they're um they as Rob said, we've leaked eighty four points in the past two games. Flano has oh. been um um working on our off our offense without the ball and it, what we can do to um prevent points being scored. No, I'll Sorry, start no. to help you. Out. Um, so, what do you well, think? what do you think of Flanner focusing on our um, wrestling our defence? I think it's a good idea. I mean, obviously, wrestling is a part of the game. Um, he's identifying. I mean, you just said eighty four points in two matches. Whatever way you look at it, one match, the other match is a shitload of points. Considering that we're not scoring as many points, so if you're not going to score as many, you're going to concede that many. You're going to lose the game, right? So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a massive issue um, and has to be addressed. I mean, it's alarm bells, really. And it doesn't get any easier because we're playing Manly, obviously, as well, who are a paid attacking team as well. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, mate, um, yeah, whatever Flano can do to um, arrest the situation because, um, you know, 84 points is, is a shitload of points, mate, you know. So, yeah. Um, we, we just got to do better. As simple as that. I mean, we can see a whole lot of less points and we can score some of them and we can win. But if we can see that amount of points, I mean, against me, and we forget about it, we're gone. So, oh, what's your Manly, take on that, Big T? Manly Flano's speed's going to on defense us. today and wrestling. Well, mate, we've got to stop Manly. We've got to stop their speed there. They're an outside back. It's Cola. Um, Gary. Like, um, yeah. Suli or Gary. Uh, Suli or uh, Bird are not going to keep up keep up with Cola. Um, no, Rava's not going to keep Cola. You've got um, um, uh, Paolo on the wing. Um, he's a speedster. The other wing they would have had Saab, but they've got who's going to got the other wing? Um, Vega. Vega. He's speedy. <laughs> I haven't seen much Tom of him. So I don't know. But uh, Blue Brooks is fast. Um, and Ola Kawatu in the forward oh, on the yep. edge. He's, he's going to terrorise us. Um, but yeah, yeah um, we've, Lure, we've, got, we've got to we've got to stop mainly outside backs getting early balls. 
If they get an early ball in the outside backs, we're not going to stop them. They've got to stop the ball in the halves. They've got yep. to concentrate Evans on... Game. Concentrate on Cherry Evans and Luke Brooks and don't let the ball get past them. Um, That's probably part of the problem too, Big T, that they're, now with Luke Brooks, they've, they've definitely got two options. And and to make matters even better for Manly, Luke Brooks is a left footer and obviously Cherry's a right footer. So it well, Cherry can kick both. Yeah, well, it kicks both as well too. Whereas with the Dragons, if Hunt just does the Hunt thing and um, it's only going to go to Hunt to make the decisions and make the play, well, then we're, yeah. they're going to they're going to charge him. Like well, that's, that, that's sort of dictated to the way Hunt has to play because our forwards aren't going forward. And like, yeah, well, that's the problem like as well. we said, like, like we said last week on the um, on the Sunday vote, I think it was. Um, if your forwards don't go forward, all, all you have to do is put up the ball. That's all you've got. That's yeah, all you've yeah. got. Like kick the ball to the corner, but if you're kicking from your own forty, it's not like well, you can do. against the Dolphins. Correct me if I'm wrong. We had no fall. All the falls are under 100 meters. Is that correct? Against the Dolphins. Yeah, but against the yeah, Titans, I mean, we had four or five of them were over 100 meters. Yeah, so if we do that, if we're against the Cowboys, meters, we have probably had one or two as well. So yeah, we get smashed if, we, if we if we don't have any falls going over 100 meters. Well, the Cowboys well, game was an anomaly. Yeah, the Cowboys game was an anomaly. It's, it was a strange, strange game. Hmm. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll move on to our next bit now. So, um, I'll throw this one to you, Rob. So, Hama, yeah. Hame Sele um, returns off the bench. Flano mentioned his footwork and line speed will add something to the forward pack. Um, is it great to see Hame back in the Red V after after missing the um, trials and, and the first part of the season due to injury? Are you happy to see him back at the club and straight into the team? Well, absolutely. I mean, I think you'll add value. Um, he obviously um, was a good player at South with a, with a you know, very competitive pack. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's good to see an old boy come back home. And um, he's definitely got the ability for the go forward uh, that we need. Um, and I think it's probably a good move to find out got him on the bench because obviously fitness-wise, he hasn't had the games, right, the matches. So, you know, there's nothing better than match fitness. I know you've got to play the games to get the match fitness, but, you know, going through aiming and starting would, would probably be a bit crazy and ask him to play more minutes. So, you know, I don't know how it'll pan out with the amount of minutes he plays, but... I definitely see him adding value to us. I mean, again, we talk about 84 points conceded in the last two weeks, um, and we only scored so many points. Um, not obviously not against the Dolphins. So, with his go forward momentum, um, we can't really add value. I hope anyway, mate. Fingers crossed. Yeah, and yeah, obviously he's as it was straight up starter in, into the 17, and I think a few more weeks if he can get his form up and, and get some fitness in his legs and get some games under his belt, he could push into the starting side. I oh, absolutely can't be better for us, man. I mean, he's a, he's obviously a quality player. Yep. Okay, so I'll, this one's for you, Big T. You are still there? Is eating the pizza? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll keep this one with you anyway, Rob. Yeah. While, while, while um while we're waiting for Big T to come back. Um, so for the first time this year, no excuses. Um, we have everyone available for selection. Does this give Flannis a confidence that now he has the complement of, of his best team? Or do you think it could be the last chance to see this team together? And if they don't perform, Flanner could make the wholesale change that we're expecting. Well, look, it's a good thing. I mean, if you can put your strongest team out on on paper, um, but I go back to the South trial. No, it's a trial in the first half. We supposedly had our strongest team, you know, available, and we could barely score, score a point, uh, except for a South mistake. But in saying that, um, look, I mean, geez, the last two weeks. Um, so yeah, I mean, if we can put our best team out there now, um, and yeah, I mean, there's no excuses. I mean. We've got everything to play for, everything to gain, nothing to lose. So at the end of the day, um, what's the saying? Bring it on. Um, yeah, and then if we fail, we fail. I mean, and then we just got to turn around and say, maybe we don't have the cattle. We don't have the the players across the board um, 
um, to compete with all these, you know, the, the better teams or to compete for top eight or finals. So, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I question still Jack Bird. Um, I think there's something there now, you know, comment, but uh, I don't see Jack Bird as being our best option at centre. Um, I believe Lomax is um, the best option there. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Jack Bird for me, maybe a 14, but um, I, I really question that. I know Flano, um, you know, sees a lot in Jack Bird, but I think Jack Bird's played his best footy. I, I, I don't see him being in any team, the centre in any team in the NRL, to be honest with you. So I don't understand persisting with Jack Bird at centre. I don't get it. And I, and I mean, Lomax has been killing it on the wing. I get that, but that's my only criticism. One of my only criticisms in the team that I we're playing our strongest team. And how the hell is Jack Bird the centre or at centre if we're playing our strongest seventeen? So I don't know, Jesse Big I'll Throw it to you guys. What do you think? Uh, do you think Jack Bird would? in our strongest team on paper should be playing center? I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. But while, as Flanagan said, he thinks Bird has played his best football at center, and that's why he's picking him at center, because he thinks Maybe he's gone past, that's his best position. That was like years yes. ago. Yes, it's I know. Past, he's yeah. still living in the past, and Bird's a different player to what it was eight years ago. He's had two knee reconstructions since then, He's, he's, yeah. he's slowing down and he, he doesn't have the movement that he does. That he did back oh, I now. Mate. Yeah, I mean, if you look at all the centers out there, I mean, he'd be almost the slowest center running around. Yeah. So. And that's no, that's no fault of his because he's just, it. when you lose to have two new reconstructions, you're not the same anymore. Oh, no, 100%, mate. 100%. So I, I just don't get the persisting with him, at, um, especially when. If he's playing fourteen, he can he can play second row, he can play five eight, he can so play that, fullback yeah. at a stretch as well. Yeah, uh, you know, so I don't get it. I really don't get it. Um, you know, and, and the pinch of trying to keep Lomax still, who I still think's got a lot to offer, and I hate to see him go, but obviously it's looking like that's what's going to happen. But he's playing um, very well on the wing. Well, yeah, but I think he can just play just as well in the centre too. You know, so you play, he plays just as well at fullback as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, like so, I said, weeks, like I said weeks ago, he's our best option at centre, best option at winger, and pretty close to our best option at fullback. Just don't like losing a player of that ilk. I hate to think that he's going to go to another club. You know what I mean? I'll say this: I would rather keep Zach Lomax than Jack Bird. I'm sure you'll both agree. Yeah, I do 100%. agree. Oh, mate, 100% knowing against Jack as well, too. <coughs> you don't see Ben Hunt being forced to go and play hooker, do you? No. If that's his best position for the so team. Ben, ben, so Ben Kirby's just asked any word on the May brothers. So, yeah, yeah there is. Oh. Um, Taylor's just re-signed until 2026 So with the Panthers. So, yeah, we are not getting t- Taylor and May to the Dragons. No. Another player we've missed out on. Yeah. It adds up, doesn't it? What we get linked to, we get linked to so many. Okay, um, so I'll go to you now, Big T. So Jesse Mark, you retained his spot in the seventeen with the return of Jacob Little, and pushes Connor Mulhison back to the extended bench. What's your thoughts on this move by Flanagan? Right move oh, or wrong move? Yeah, I think it's a right move. Uh, Mask can play a number of positions. He can play half. He can play five eight. He can play hooker. Um, so if he comes on and he has, he has 15 minutes for a little to go off and have a rest. He has 15 minutes for a little to go off and rest. Maybe he'll have a run this week because uh, he might watch Little run run the ball. Um, yeah, last week, him and Mulhausen, um, zero runs between them. So, mm. some good, good, some good um, points here from Lisa Marie Curtis. So, Hunter's not a kick, strong kicker of bombs. Straight down the throat of the opposition, no fuss. And field position is given away for free. Try something else. I'll let Flanagan take on some kicking duties. Things we've said on the show before. Ravalar is not getting decent attacking opportunities. I think that could be due to he's due to uh, being on the not wrong side on the field, but he's not um going for going for opportunities either. I mean, 
when when he's under the high ball, he doesn't compete for it. And that's a that's a worrying sign, I think. Um, Bird, Bird is the passionate hard worker, but his past playing in the centres. Defensive structures need to fit the play, and team leaders call it out loud. Lomax out of place on the wing. Well, no, Lomax. I think Lomax is, is doing the job. I know he prefers to play centre, but he's just doing the job, and and it's not only our club that's recognising. I mean, Shane Flanagan said he was that was his he was our best player on the weekend, and then you got Michael Maguire, the New South Wales Origin coach, who's, who's looking at him as a smoky for a, a de- Origin debut list this year. So, I mean. His form's not going unnoticed, and he is doing a job on the wing despite um, claims to him that he wants to be centre. And then, and then I, I heard this report today that Brett Reid reckons um, that Lomax will be at Parramatta next year regardless of if he goes back to centre or not. Well, they've just uncovered that young bloke. Um, Talangi. An exception, yeah, exceptional game against Manly. So uh, will, will they bother with Lomax? I think you'll remember too, Zach kicks goals as well. So you remember that, that that's in the equation as well. But picking up on Lisa Marie's comments there, I was at a game that I think it was last season and I was talking to Sean Timmons. I think he was involved with the kicking with the Dragons in the back. So I said to Timo, um, why, why are we kicking floating bombs? You know, floaters like crossfield or floaters. I mean, you see Burton do it at times. You see... Big T, the halfback for Canberra. I think he, he kicks the flag as well. Yeah, yeah, I used to do it. Chad, to Tan, do it. Chad Tanzan can do it as well too. And he told me Ben Hunt can kick a flag up. So he doesn't, he, all he does is kick bombs. He doesn't kick the space. No, I know. And this is what I'm picking up on. So there's no creativity because the, the last couple of years has been a bomb for Lomax and that's pretty much it. That's There's been a blindside bomb as well too. So it, it is from an attacking point of view, you know, and like I said, with Ben Hunt running the show or mostly running the show, the teams are targeting him. So he's got That's less right. they time. They know where it's going. He's got less and time. Now, now, you can't, now you can't have blockers at, at W half either. So you can't Thank have... Thank you, Penrith Pan. Thank you, Nathan yeah. Cleary. Yeah, but no, no Cam, Penrith have already worked it out, how to fix it. Yep. Mitch Kenny yeah. looks to where Cleary he is. He runs towards the, where he throws the ball. And the yeah. player comes from comes from some marker has to run next to him. He yeah, can't run he gets forward. Clear he can't run forward because he'd be downtown. Yeah. So he runs and across what, the field. What I was trying to get at is, you watch the game against the Cowboys, and then you got you got Chad Townsend and you got Tommy Dearden. So when you see they're working well together, Chad Townsend's got a little bit more time as a kicker than what Ben Hunt does because. He's got Tom Dearden as the other option, whereas Ben Hunt, it's just sort of almost down to the one option. Well, Don, so, Don Williams, yeah. Don Williams in the track's got it right. It's too predictable. No, hundred percent, and that's what I'm trying to say. Cowboys are a great example for Flano to say to see. Well, it's his own son <laughs> in Flano, that hey. Is it Ben Hunt? You got to convince here, or is it Jacob Little? You got to convince. Is it the hooker? But hey, we're going to keep the um, the opposition guessing a bit. If it's all going down to Hunt, or you know, ninety percent of the time, we're going to go after Hunt ninety percent of the time. We're not even going to look at Flano kicking the ball. If you see where I'm coming from, so that's that's <laughs> where uh, I agree with Lisa Marie. But it's 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 a big problem. Can Jesse uh, kick? I've seen he kicked a little bit in the a, charity field, but I, I don't know if he get Jesse much opportunity Godfrey. off the bench. He was a halfback for Norse, wasn't he? In, in, uh, in he was, yeah. Reserve, so, yeah. Yeah, but is he going to be allowed to kick? That's part of the problem. Mm. So, you know, I don't know Little doesn't kick, does he? No, so, he's more of a runner of the yeah. football. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. You know, it's Ben Hunt too when he gets to hooker. He'll go for a 40 20 from there as well, too. Well, Andrew Kay raises a different point. But the game, the game's changed a lot since between now and then. The game's a lot quicker now. It was a different game back then. Um, you couldn't really compare it to now because we're in different eras. Like that game, that back then, it was more orientated on defense. Like we we won our games back on their defense when we had Wayne Bennett as coach. But um, at Sally had a little bit of variety of kick, kicking. He could do the long kicks. He could do the bombs, and he could. He was a, he was a pinpoint kicker and. Um, you could rely on him to get your result. Um, 
Ben Hunt's a different sort of a player I see, and and I don't see him as the um. I think they're two completely different players, Sowerton and Hunt, and but it's too hard to say because they're played in different eras. Well, same thing as looking at Chuck Mundine. Chuck Mundine would chip over the top. Yeah, Blacklock like a Slane flying up as well too. But in the day, you've got to remember Ben Hunt's 34, turning 35 years old. We're just talking about JDB slowing down. Speaking I mean, of which, Rob, run through the gap there. Um, you know, and obviously had to give it to Slane, but Father Time gets the best of players at the end of the day. Doesn't Speaking of which, Rob. Yeah, sorry. The man you're talking about, Ben Hunt, it's his birthday tomorrow. Any anything you want to say to him? Oh, happy birthday. And I hope you <laughs> shout the coffee. <laughs> Turning 34 tomorrow. Well, there you go. I remember. Happy that birthday, age. Captain Benny. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, you know, obviously 34 years old, it's not spring chicken anymore. So, you know, it's Flane's responsibility as a coach that he's got to, got to sort of take the pressure off him that can't. Can't do everything. I think Big T said, or one of the comments said, the game's getting faster and faster. I mean, can't rely on Ben Hunt to run the whole bloody thing all the time. Oh, we're doomed for disaster. He's going to have to play absolutely to the top of his game if we're going to win games. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ian. Anyway, um, well, is that mean Ian? Right. Uh, so we, we walked back. <laughs> all right my, um rob so we welcome back Jaden sewer um he's still under injury cloud but he um he returns on the edge forming a dynamic bro with dynamic back row with luciano and lua how big an inclusion is Jaden sewer if he plays this weekend oh, i think it's great um i think jaden has been playing well um he's tough he's robust he's um getting offload away um, and Luch as well. I, I, I've got to say, I think Donnie said as well too, we're all sceptical of him about his fitness and saying he should start in reserve grade. But, I mean, last week Luch put in and um, lots of tackles and maybe even one, only one miss or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I'd hope, I'd hope we could call them. You heard it here first, Big T, Batman, the dynamic duo. Luch and, uh, yeah. Luch uh, and Sewer. Because, mate, they're two big buggers. Um, and you know, they can offload the ball robust, so mate, I'd see as a, as a good thing. I'm, I'm excited to have him back. Um, and yeah, he's probably been missed to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, so I see as a positive. Yep, okay, so I'll move on into this one. So, man, have arguably been, been the form comp team of the competition. Um, what do you think we need to do to, to, to shut them down? And what do we have to do to ground, ground the um, the Eagles? Stop with the halves. You've got to stop the halves. Um, stop Brooks. Stop um, Stop um, Jerry. Jerry Evans. And, and kick Turbo. the ball away from Tommy. You've got to kick the ball away from Tommy, yeah. You've got to stop the ball getting out past Olakawa to... Um, on one side and on, on the other side as well. So I can't go any further than that. It's got dangers all over the field. Big T, you said it before. The one thing I know is Manly, in some of these games I'm watching Manly versus Para and Manly versus Roosters, I think it was, how bloody fast were these games? Hmm. How fast are Manly across the park? You know, they are, they're, they're that's what fast. worries me with St. George. Yeah. It's not defeating yeah. the force, but it's in the in the... And stopping their halves is their speed. Their speed is is uh, yeah they're, something they're to be reckoned. They're not at full speed at the moment. They haven't got Saab. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> their wingers, their wingers, cursed. They lost Saab. They lost Tommy Talao. They've got their third string winger. Baker. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So have we got the Vega. fourth string here in reserve grade, have we? <laughs> the manly Tupanu is top of Yeah, yeah. Top of yeah. Yeah. Man. So I don't know. I agree with Big T. Oh, well, mate, well, just what you said, Big T. They're fucking strong all over the field. They oh, are. Geez. You know, it's a worry. It's a concern. And it's a concern if we fall away again. I don't know what it is. Uh, Jesse, you said 
once the tries go in against us or whatever, the heads go down, and I don't know, something happens. We just we lose confidence. Under eight boys team or something. They have a you sook. Know, we, just, we, we lose it. They have a big sook. Yeah, hundred percent. We sort of it's don't they like that, and you know, and 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 sort of well, okay, let's try and score a few tries to make the scoreline look better. They give up. They give up. They take, yeah, they take their ball and go home. Well, last week they tried to take the ball, but Cowboys wouldn't give it to them. Um, <laughs> Fifty-five minutes, we had the ball twice. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. We have I to mean, be better in defense, though. Possession. That's, that's right. Just got to stop making mistakes. Silly yeah. mistakes. I mean, like you look at. Have you seen like Ravalawa lately? Last two games, a bomb gets put to him. He just sits there and waits and watches the ball instead of competing for the ball. What I mean, well, a lot of teams are doing that now. But what's happening? Rava isn't positioning himself right. It's when the guy hits the ground, when the manly player hits the ground, he's got to smash him. Yeah, um, he let, he's, he's not getting himself. He's not getting time, himself he it's too late. He scores. Jesse, he's not you're getting right. himself in the right position. Was it the Dolphins game? Who's the Dolphins winger? He's a bloody good winger, and the Zarko. ball the bomb went up. Yeah, Zarko. And, goals, and Rava just looked like I'll, I'll tackle him in the air. I'll, I'll tackle him over the sideline, uh, over the end goal side. And he scored, yeah. He forgot, well, shit, this guy's still pretty strong. And he twisted and he got the ball down. He didn't compete, Big T. He didn't compete for but the other ball. Te- other teams are doing the same thing. Other teams yeah. are not competing for the ball. So letting, the, letting the attacking player catch the ball. And when he hits the ground, they absolutely poleaxe him. Absolutely yeah. smash him. But obviously but, you need goals is a bad idea. <laughs> sorry? I think doing... it's a very bad idea, but um, <laughs> yeah, but, but the, so, the yeah. thing, the thing, the thing that annoys me is that when we get a drop out, Ben Hunt always goes for the short ones. I don't yeah, really. I, I don't I, get I, really I, mean, I know. I know. He could smash it down the other end. Well, that's what the NRL want. Position. Yeah, the NRL don't want that huge contact of the forward running from halfway and getting smashed on the thirty. That's what they're trying would to get you, away would from. You rather than have the ball on the on their forty or thirty. Oh yeah, for sure. Rather than, than ten meters out. For sure, for sure. But they, and well, they keep well, persisting with that. I don't know if they're practicing it at training. It doesn't look like they do because they can't pull it off on game day. They've changed the rules a little bit with the blocking, right? So when the bomb goes up with the blockers, they penalise you more if you got the the blockers in play. Is there any way with Sloan we can protect him a bit more under the high ball, or it's just impossible? He goes up. I mean, Sloan's there, he's in the middle or whatever, he's got to go for it. You, couldn't you, know, really right? you have to be in place. You have to be yeah. in place. First person in place in front of the ball to become a blocker. You have to yeah. be careful you can't, with you how can't you be do penalized. it. You can't be penalised if you're in place and he runs into you. So you've got to be, still be a statue, though. You can't you move. You, you can't move. move. Yeah. You can't yeah. make any natural movement. It's like a you, tram you, can't block, you can't block the, the um, player running through either. So you've got to no, be careful right. with how you do it. That's right. Yeah. You got to, you, again, you've got to get yourself in the right position to stop that player coming in and getting over the top of you for that ball. Well, did so you, here's my, did you see what happened with Pappy the other night? Oh, sorry, mate. Did you see what happened with Pappy the other night, Big T? Was Leo what? Thompson was standing up under him, and Leo, and, and, and Pappy landed, nearly landed on his head. I've seen that, yeah. That was very dangerous. For you. you don't want it to Lee. end up like that. No, that's right, no. No. So here's here's my here's my twenty two million dollar question, and Donnie's going to write me down in flames now. This will be like the devil. But would it work the Ben Barber Valentine's home time um, scenario when you're in fullback like at Sharks and Flano is coaching? If we had Lomax back at fullback in defence and Sloan in attack, can they can they possibly swap like that, or is it near impossible to do that in the game? I don't think it'll because obviously be. Lomax under the high ball is pretty safe, I imagine. Um, but Sl- Sloan on the wing that scares me. It is defence; they'll smash him. There's a lot of big wingers today. Yeah, I was just thinking about the high ball that comes through because, like Big T said, a lot of times the bomb goes up, and I'm thinking about well, is Lomax safe for under the high ball for us? In defence, if you see where I'm coming, no. if, where I'm coming from, doesn't matter who who catches the ball. I close my eyes every time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can be a lot. He's, right? he's not going to catch it. But you watch other clubs. You watch Penrith, and you go, "He's not going to drop this." No. Dylan Edwards. You watch. You watch the Roosters. He's not going to drop this. But every time you stick it, you're like, 
Please catch uh, it. Yes, well, yeah, hold your breath. Well, he's improved because he used to bounce a bit, remember? Well, that was his yeah. And Ra- Rav, Rav is another one like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Said, said in the comments there, Rava doesn't look happy without his mate Zach. I, th- yeah. I think he's on the wrong side. Zach's taken his position and Rava's just been moved. So it's like Hook last well, the season before with the with Suli on the wrong side in centre. Yeah. So he should adjust that. Um, but that, yeah, I mean, that means probably, that means moving Zach back to centre and Jack Bird out. So yeah, that's not going to happen. No. Unless injuries hit. Um, yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll lighten the load a bit. Um, yeah. So we had a debutante on the weekend we just mentioned before. Um, we had Jesse Markey make his debut. And the um, the rest of the squad recognised that today. And this happened. <laughs> the drive. Drive of shame. Drive of shame, is it? <laughs> drive of fame. <laughs> fame or something. Um, yeah, it would have been pretty good if I was driving my car. I was my sister's car, so I was a little bit embarrassing, to be honest. So. Uh, no, it feels good. So it could be a... Uh, that's sure. Nice. nice. I don't understand it, but... So that's what they do with all the debutantes. They just yeah, make them um, drive the um, the car into their new parking spot and, and all the team, you know, give them a guard of honour on the way out <laughs> after training. So uh, that's been a thing that Flano started and it seems like a lot of fun. Yeah. And you would have noticed too, um, the Dragons weren't in their um, regular um, gear today. So they were, this weekend, the Dragons will be celebrating Junior Appreciation Round. So it, it recognises the grassroots in the Junior League. So the NRL players wore 34 jerseys of junior clubs in our St. George and Illawarra catchment areas today. Each junior club in our area will be recognised with a pre-game function at the Illawarra Steelers Club and a junior relay at halftime during the game on Saturday night. Nice. So how, how important is it to, to um, connect with our um, grassroots and you know, junior rugby league clubs in the area? Big T. Oh, you have to. Um, I've been saying for years that us not winning, we're losing fans. Um, these kids aren't going to, going to want to be Dragon supporters because they don't win games. But if we can connect with the play with the, with the kids, um, they go out to the schools um, during halftime of the game. My young bloke played on Wind Stadium halftime of the game when he was under tens, and um, he still talks about it. So that was, that was a big thrill of his life playing on Wind Stadium. He said it was like a pillow. He played <laughs> played on Wind Stadium like a pillow. Um, soft, it was nice. It wasn't to be tackled on. All right, you, you have to. Grassroots is, is the key. Look at look at um Penrith, all their junior teams are winning. Um, so if you if you ha- if your top team's winning, everybody else just falls in the line. Well, this is how I see it too. Like the, the NRL have got focus on putting new teams in, um, turning Chinese rules. But they, what they need to do is put some money into these grassroots clubs because the game in the country is dying. They need to really yes. invest in that because we don't want it to die. Otherwise, there'll be no rugby league in the bush. And that's going to be a sad story if that ever happens. Especially in that time of yeah. Vegas. I mean, millions of dollars. But in, in, in the bush, they're travelling six to eight hours to get to games. That's how much is dying out there. Um, the, the groups are getting bigger and... You've got one end of New South Wales playing the other end of New South Wales in a local club. Um, there's just not enough, enough, enough teams out there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you got, you got to. There's a lot of clubs that have had to fold because there's not, they don't have the money to afford it and to side anymore, and 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 country rugby league's just it's not happening anymore. I mean, it's it's going to be sad. It's not the thing it once was. Um, it used to be a booming thing out out west and. Down south, I mean, down here, it, there's um, 
well, you'd know down your way too, Big T, there's, there's not as many teams down the coast as there used to be. No. It's very sad. There's not as many grades either. Um, they're starting to combine combine grades down here. Um, 11s and 12s and 13s and 14s and 15s and 16s are all becoming the one comp. Um, kids aren't playing the game anymore. Um, and I think... I think taking away <coughs> competition points in the lower grades is a bad thing as well because kids know when they win a game. Kids know when they've won. Kids know they've won every game this season, but everybody gets a trophy because they participated. Everyone gets the same trophy because they participated. And the kids are going, but well, we won every game. They get nothing for it. Points. They get nothing for it. They big team in Jesse. Only, no. only time to get to a certain age, yeah. I've got, got a question without notice for you guys. Um, West Tigers, until last weekend, would have probably got an O for Opalus, right? Um, yeah, hopeless. Nobody would have thought that West Tigers would have knocked off the Sharks, who some people might have said Sharks definitely top eight, maybe even top four. What did West Tigers do to play Nothing. so well to dominate the Sharks to – Change their form. Defense. Their defense. The same way the I don't, Dragons are being smashed. I don't think points can see in the last two weeks. I don't think, think the Tigers look any good myself. Sorry, mate. I don't think the Tigers look any good. Yeah. Cronulla, they kick, Cronulla, they made, the sharks to death. Cronulla, Cronulla made 16 errors. They missed 30 tackles. And Nico Hines kicked out the full three times. So you think it was more the mistakes of Cronulla or all the pressure? Did, did West Tigers crave the pressure though as well? well you got to remember, Leichhardt was absolutely jam packed. They were standing on each other's shoulders in Leichhardt. Five dollars, five dollars, five dollars to get on the hill. Um, yeah. They were jam packed. There was a million of people there. Yeah, and they, they want to, and they want to take, they want to close down Leichhardt Oval. They do. What do you, um, what do you think on also, that? Uh, oh, well, um, Leichhardt Oval is a fortress. Um, when you've got oh, nineteen thousand people, the pressure coming from that crowd on the opposition teams is crushing. I mean, I've been um, in packed Cobra Oval before when it's absolutely oh, exactly packed. right. When it's packed, when there's people body. standing on people's shoulders, well, it's scary. Another one. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you can crush the other team with the crowd, that's what you've got you to bring do. Your, you bring the team think, into the game. I think our crowd's too nice. We're too nice. Yeah. Um, but. We're just two nice opposition teams. Yeah. So that's where our ruthlessness has to start. Yeah, you're right. So I start with the fans. The fans, teams, the fans yeah. have to get out there. Absolutely stuck into the opposition. Absolutely you know, stuck we're, in. We're trying our best to rev the team up. Donnie's trying his best to rev the team up. Hopefully they're seeing some of this. And um, Well, I'll put this to you guys. What crowd are you expecting in Wollongong on Saturday? And what's your message to fans that are going to the game on Saturday? I'll get out there and support the team. We need we need eighteen, nineteen thousand there. Yeah, um, I, I don't think we're going to get it. I think it's only going to be we're going to probably get 12, eleven, maybe close. eleven. Um, yeah, um, but yeah, the the greater the numbers, the better chance yeah. we've got for the full support behind us. I think that's what our players need. They need this. Dom, need Dom Williams is Dom Williams is on fire. Get the crowd fired up and bring him back. Skull. He's on fire. Dom Williams. Oh, the skull. I remember he's got, the skull. He's got all the answers. He's got all the answers. The scale when we had MG on last year, he said the scale scared him. The Absolutely, the it was allowed. It would intimidate them. So we, uh, our, our crowd good. was under ten at Cogra. So you're yeah. expecting around what the 11, 12 at, at Wollongong yeah, or something? 10, 10, 11, 10, 11. I think uh, so. After losing again, unfortunately, Jesse. I mean, yeah. Um, but then who knows? Because um, it's a long way for Manly. I don't expect many Manly supporters to come because it's it's a, no. it's a fair way from well, Manly. That's, but that's what Adam, Adam was saying. That you know, they don't like crossing the bridge. Um, the no. fans don't like coming down anywhere past Roosters. Any, anywhere past East, they never tra- they don't travel. Yeah, no. But I think the problem for our supporters is is that we're falling away in games and we're starting well, and we just we just fall to shit. And it's hard to hard to support when you you pay good money to a game, and all of a sudden, <coughs> you know, your team yeah. is losing by a substantial amount. You know what I mean? And you're leaving with twenty to go. Um, 
Lisa Marie Cooper is now going to go for the Winona Bullet Bush Rangers. Give me up for the Greg. <laughs> Must be a junior See? club. There's another, there's another thing, Winuna Bulloy. They used to be the Winuna whoever it was and the Bulloy whoever it was. Yeah, yeah they're one team. Well, and Winuna Bulloy, they're, they're, like, they're, like, they're like probably as close as, as Cronulla and Sutherland. That's, they're like <laughs> suburb to suburb. Yeah, I, I understand that. But yeah. back in the day, it would have been the Winuna Bullants and the Bulloy Bush Rangers. You know what I mean? Like whatever well, it was. I, I, been, I'm in the area. My, the club would have been two I'm, teams. My cl- local club's called the Albion Park Oak Flats Eagles. Yeah, they got a great side. I like Crew Reserve, um, where they play their football out there. Um, yeah. That's a great five or six grounds. They're playing 10, 20 games of football there a weekend. Um, so everyone everyone goes there to Crew. Um, yeah. One thing, That's question again without notice. Sorry, Jesse. Um, I love the old boys getting involved with the team, bring back some, some of the old boys. Yeah. Game in the dressing room, um, game the fire up. <laughs> you know, some great old boys, you know, St. George Dragons, St. George Illawarra Dragons as well. Over the years in Illawarra as well, too. Um, I saw there was a messenger or a text from Matt Cooper that he obviously wanted yeah. to be involved. I know there's a lot more of the story of Matt Cooper on Make, Make CI, but <laughs> apparently Peter Dowse is not a fan. But, Mate, I remember Flano is coaching us now. Um, I think it might have been the premiership winning year, 2016, maybe 15, 16. You got ET and Andrew Eddinghouse that helped out with the outside backs for defence. So I look at ET and I look at Matt Cooper as being pretty similar players. I mean, people might argue and say, well, ET obviously might have might have had more um, rep jerseys or whatever, but. Um, it was good enough for ET to help out the Sharks at the time. Why aren't we getting players back into our Dragons like that? Well, Why aren't we, we getting players? You know? We have. We've got Mark, Mark Coyne. Mark Coyne's Thank come you. back into the fold. Um, Brian Johnson hangs around. Um, but they do need they do need more um, more ex-players to be there just to mentor. Dave Young's assistant young. coach. Well, well the, Matt Head's still there. I think Matt Head's still there. And um, Piggy's down in, in, the, in the juniors. Sean Timmons. Um, Sean Timmons. I mean, they're still around. Club. I mean, Billy Slater. And Millard before. played for the Dragons as well. Billy He's Slater was doing all these jobs with Queensland State of Origin and all that. He was working at Pappenhausen at fullback as a one-on-one, as a mentor. So, you know, you think of Tyrell Slane. I mean, why aren't we getting a, someone to come in and help him out? You know what I mean? At fullback. So... You know, I, I just think maybe we could be doing a little bit more. And that's why I harp on to say, again, question without notice, are we lacking uh, someone who's a real good footy head to come in and help Flano, a CEO, a director of footy like a Shane Richardson or a Gus Gould that really can help the coach take some pressure away, attract players, you know, yeah. be in the game that way? I mean, Big T, you said before with Gus. Gus Gould, Gus has been huge at Canterbury. Stephen Crichton, uh, Kid Cow, um, yeah, all of them. You know, we've sold at the Dreads. He sold the Bulldogs to those players. Yeah. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. He's, he's told them within five years, will we win the comp? Yeah. And I don't know if our. our and they're, our they're club investing sellers. in their juniors as well. Yeah. yeah. But our, so our, our people, our, our recruitment team out there. Telling them that we're going to win the comp in four years' time. No. What's, no, what's our going, vision? What's our what's vision? Our what's our plan? You've got, to, you've got to be able to um, work on the player's psyche and say, "Do you want to be the world's best player? Come to the Dragons and show people you're the world's best player by taking the Dragons to the grand final." And what what's Flanner's plan for the team going forward? Not just exactly this right. year, but years to come. Exactly right. Exactly right. You've got to have a plan. Like he knows this year's a write-off. But you've got to build into that next next well, year and have a plan. That was just that was just a throwaway like, throwaway line. He knows this year's a ride off, but he's trying to take pressure off the team, but it's not working. But I mean, Gus was but Gus was involved with Penrith, right? With their centre of excellence and their their team when they came through. I know they had Cleary and Lil I and uh, Edwards and all this sort of stuff, but he was a man behind the man involved with with, with that team. I mean, God, they won three in a row. It could be possibly four. Um, so that's that's been massive turnaround uh, for Penrith. I mean, I think they ran last at some stage. So 
Uh, I believe Shane Richardson was was a CEO, um, you know, uh, even at Sharks at one stage as well, and been successful. So I don't know. I'm putting it out there to everybody. Uh, I thought Gus said that we needed a clean out in the front office as well as the playing group, um, and maybe Gus was right. Maybe that's what we need. Forget the board, but maybe we need we need a a good domineering CEO director of footy to come in because at the moment Flano's yeah. left to do everything. Ian Johnson there in the comments saying an NFL corporation come in. Actually the 49ers um boss was talking about buying into the NRL. So if he's talking about it, he can see a future in it. And he's he's the he's the um 49ers boss so he knows he knows what's going to work in America and what's well, it's not going to work, so... Well, don't we, don't we have some money from Triggy Forest now as well, too, at the Dragons? Is that right? Or aren't yes, my so it's two million sponsorship. Not a... Not a but it's sponsored, so we're, we're affluent. So why not Why not get some, you know, like real street smart NRL, you know, footy, like a Gus School, like Shane Richardson. I mean, I know Donnie said that there's, there's no one out there anymore. There's no one left at the moment. No figurehead. No. Left for a but, you know... I mean, even the Melbourne Storm guy, I believe, is meant to be very good as well, too. The Melbourne Storm. Penrith, Penrith don't have a thing in place like that, but that, that, that they have their programs run right, right from the top right to the bottom, and everyone's on the same page. Oh, I've run, clearly runs all that. But um, it was all set up from years ago when Gus Gus set it up. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Put in place. And, and Donnie said the other day, it's, well on. It's, great, it's great to have a centre of excellence, but are we going to use it properly? Are we going to do anything with it? So, you know, think about all these things um, that we, we could become so much bigger and greater, but we might yeah. need change. You might need more change. About, instead of just changing the coaching staff and the coach, we might need to change more of these positions, though, yeah. you know. Okay. Anyway, we've got to move on. Um, yeah, sorry. Move into our next segment of the evening. Uh, 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 uh. Sounds like Hawaii Five A. Chips, mate. Chips. California Highway Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used to love that show. Okay, unfortunately, we don't have Coco on tonight, but she has sent through um, her um, clashes that she's looking forward to yet. So she sent me, um, she's gone through with um, Jack Burr up against Ruben Garrick, Blake Laurie up against Josh Alloyer. He's got, she's also gone Brooks and Cherry Evans against Flanick and, and Hunt, and also Luciana Leilua and Hamali Olakawatu. Um, yeah, that'd be a good one. So um, I'll throw it to you, Big T. What what do you think of Coco's um, the key clashes, and what do you think of the key clashes in this game? Oh, it's, it's all over the ground. You, Cherry Evans versus Hunt. Um, you can see Cherry Evans might get on top of that, but whoever gets on top of that battle will um, dictate the game. Um, again, the, our forwards have to run. They have to make the metres. They have to make the post-contact metres. They have to offload. They have to line breaks, tackle breaks. Um, the forwards have to be on their game and they've got a great forward pack and we've got a forward pack. Um, so, <laughs> but it's our best forward pack. Um, I don't think there's anybody missing. Uh, I thought, I thought Michael Mullo was a bit unlucky missing out. Um, but someone's got to go to bring Harmay Sello back in to bring Frankie Molo back in. I have to bring Jaden Sewell back in. Um, they're all key key positions for the Dragons, so we've got to win those battles. And what do you what do you think, Big um, Rob? What do you think um, the key matchups are Tiger, for us to come? Tiger is giving some great, um, obviously, players up against each other there. Without a doubt, the halfbacks um, uh, are big. Um, 
And I, I find Ben Hunt is a big admirer of um, Cherry Evans. I think he looks up to Cherry. I mean, they're in similar age. Cherry might just be a year older, but sometimes I might be a bit passive because, you know, Cherry is the, uh, right up there. Um, oh, he's so a dominant yeah. Queenslander, isn't he? And yeah. their teammates yeah. at Origin yeah. level as well. So I'm hoping Ben might be able to do the sort of reverse psychology and and be up for a big one against him. Um, but probably the one missed is Sloan and, um, and Tommy T. Because um, we all know Terrell's got that ability to make something from nothing, which is the same thing Tommy T can do. So if we're going to look at any one player in the Dragons that could possibly do something for us, even if it's one try to win the game, it's Sloan. He's got that ability. <coughs> With the same breath, Tommy T. And I go back to Nathan Blacklock, I go back to Chuck Mundine in the same way. Um, Slane seems to be a sort of player that, you know, if he's going to run 30 metres or 40 metres, score a try, he's probably the only one that I could see that, that, that could possibly do that for us, you know what I mean? That has the pace, the speed um, to do that. But the, the one thing that worries me um, is what Coco said with the centres. I am worried about Jack Bird because um, I think that Manly could run over the top of Jack Bird, to be honest with you. Uh, um, so, yeah, so it um, could be a bit contentious. But I think, like you said, Big T, across the park, um, yeah, we're going to have to be bloody good to match That's them. right. We've got, we've, got to, we've, got to win. we've got to win the forward battle. If the forward battle can win that match, that'll stop their outside backs. Um, yeah. We've got to stop them getting early ball. Um, yeah. Kohler gets the early ball. He'll be gone. See you later. Um, oh, he speeds. Uh, yeah. Absolutely yeah. second to none. And well, I guess well, Jesse. Yeah, domineering, oh, sorry. domineering from the start. I mean, we potentially we've done that. And I guess um, the fall, they say, can we piece together the 80 minutes of exactly um, right. minutes? Footy, oh. and I go back to the manly. What we said before, their speed is they've got to be one of the top the top teams uh, in the comp for their speed across the park, uh, play the ball, their, their speed. So, um, we're gonna have I to think we're, really fit, we're fitter than last year. Um, oh, definitely. But, um, but while Jesse's gone, can I just bring up? I want to give kudos to the, the NRL. Last year was the first time they reached. Four million spectators going to games. Oh wow, um, that's huge! Yeah, that was an average of nineteen thousand or something a game. Um, we started off in the early days; it was two point eight million people watch, went to watch the game, and we moved to three point three million. And through the lie year, we went to seven hundred and sixty k. Twenty one twenty two was two point three million, and last year was four million spectators went to the rugby league. That's huge. Um, this year, we're on target to beat it as well. Um, I think it was 19,000 spectators every game last year. We're already 20,500 people go to the game every game this year. So, we've well, got population wise 24 or 25 million in Australia, something like that, 26. Yeah. You got to think there's a fair percentage, obviously. The well, they reckon, the they reckon there's seven, million. seven million Australians who have a rugby league team. Yeah, that's incredible. Mm. So, rugby league is obviously. Um, He's, and there's a, there's another team coming in what in the next couple of years. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We still ha we still don't know where that's going to be, obviously. Yeah. But but good on the NRL getting four million spectators to a game. That's a that's a huge effort. No, hundred percent, mate. I mean, they got bagged out about Vegas and all that sort of stuff. So they must be doing something right. And the, know, the, the, the latest news in that the Panthers are going to be the one of the teams heading there next year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll move on yeah. to some lower grade stuff now. Um, so we've got Jersey Flag playing this Saturday. They'll be playing Manly at 11.30 down at Mick Cronin Oval in Jeringong. Um, they're coming off that big win against the Cavite Silk Tails at Colgra last Saturday. Um, New South Wales Cup, they're back after having the bye last weekend. That'll be the, um, the curtain raiser to the NRL on Saturday at 3.10. They're playing the, um, the Blacktown Worker Sea Eagles. That'll be at the yeah, Win Stadium on Saturday at 3.10 p.m. The final round of the junior reps is this weekend. So, in on the St George side of the um, of the adventure, um, in the Lisa Fiola Cup, the Dragons will be taking on the Bulldogs at one pm on Saturday, two thirty pm on Saturday. It's the again the Tasha Gale Cup. So the Dragons up against the Bulldogs. 
the Harold Matthews Cup, they have a trip over the cross the ditch to the war- take on the Warriors at Navigation Home Stadium in Pukekohe. And then 9.45 a.m. Sunday, it's the SD Ball Cup team also taking on the Warriors. And then for the Illawarra Steelers, so all down at the um, Collegians Complex at Fig Tree, Lisa Viola Cup, they'll be taking on the Sharks 10.30 on Saturday. Or at 12 p.m. on Saturday, the um, the Tashio Cup again up against the Sharks. 1.30 p.m. on Saturday, the Harold Matthews Cup, they'll be taking on the North Sydney Bears. And for it be on Saturday, the SG Ball Cup will be taking also on the North Sydney Bears. And we might um looking at some viewer questions now. So anyone have some comments, um, questions that they want last the panel, um, fire away in the comments and we'll be happy to answer them. And we'll see if we can dig out some ones from previously in the show tonight. So if you have any questions, fire them away and we'll be happy to answer them. Well, Try Jesse, anyway. one, one quick question then before these ones fire in. What lower grade plays do you think could possibly come up, mate? I'm coming to the team. Um, That'd be more it, more a question for Donny. He, he keeps it more of an eye on the lower grades. I don't. But you look at the red. Look at the red. You look at the Reggies. You have got the Catsman boys. Um, yeah. I reckon they're ready to come up. Um, you got uh, probably Josh Dylan Egan knocking on the Josh door. Corrick, Josh Corrick got a run. Got a start last year. Uh, then done his ACL and didn't play for the whole season. So. Um, so is, Smiley, I think, would be not far away. Um, oh, what's the possibility of if we do sadly lose another game or two for the Manly winger to come in? Christian, I can't remember how you pronounce his last name. Tupalotu. 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 And Lomax goes to the centre and Jack Bird misses out. Is that a possibility of happening? Uh, I don't know. No. I, I, I don't think. <laughs> so it's like Hook with Embo. Just... And hook with Norman, yeah. Yeah, it won't happen. Unless he gets um, injured on June. Well, Hussein Durrani has, has put out this question. Can the Dragons win a grand final in the next four years? I'll throw this one to you, Big T. What do you think? Uh, didn't it take um, Sharks to win it in six? It took him six years when Shane Flanagan took over. I think we've got to give him time. Um, 20, 26 might be a possibility. Um but a premiership? Can you see a premiership in the next four years? Well, you've always got to be optimistic. Um, we won it in 2010 against the odds. So, um, yeah, we can we can do another one in the next four or five years, I reckon. I think it will take that time, Jesse. I remember Shane Flanagan at the time, um, a few years into it, had to move on some very key players. Luke Lewis was one of those players uh, that went to retirement. So... We're going to be in the next couple of years, like what Big T said, JDB, Ben Hunt, significant Jack players Bird. like that. Jack we Bird, have yep. to say, as my son says, Tata. Yep. If we're a yep. chance to win the grand final the future. And I think he'll be doing that with a lot of the players in this side this year. He'll be doing a big clean out and starting his own team from scratch. Yeah, because it's still Hawks' team, right? At the end of the day. We'll, we'll oh, he's, got, he's got players that he found. Um, yeah. Harme Sele, Luciano Le Lua. Um, he found Fatale these Mariner. Fatale Mariner. He found these players, and they, they were players that other clubs didn't necessarily want. Um, yeah. and they were only the, the, the players, but only they were the only players that really were available, the best players that we could get at. Oh, exactly time. right. I think he, of, of, of the pack of players that were there, they're probably more, more top. Top echelon of the players that were available, um, yeah. but they're not. They're not Tom Deeden. They're not. Um, they're not top line players. David, no. David Fafita is an interesting one. He's got to round ten, and he can he, he can opt out of the Titans in round yeah. ten. So maybe we should keep an eye on him. Um, I'm not we're sure. Look at Fuiaki from the Cowboys. He looks like a strong young back rower. The only problem with Fafita is on a million dollars a season, isn't he? At that's Titans. that's way too much for a back roller. Yeah, I think that's what he's on. Oh, yeah. yeah. 800, 900, something like that, yeah. Crazy money. But, yeah, signed for four years or something, but he put a, he actually put a clause in the contract saying, if I don't like it round 10, I'm gone. Yeah. So... Well, he will, he'll have to be the, he'll be the, um, the key for them now that your, your man's gone for the season, big two. 
how Tino's gone, and it doesn't look like Isaac's going to get a run in any, any, anytime soon. So the fast saw Malawi name is going to be out of the Titans team for a while. Mm. Anyway. But yeah, um, um, we should keep an eye on, on David Fafita. I'm sure Flanagan's got, got someone in his mind who he wants to snuff out, and yeah, 2025 might be the year that he starts putting pieces together to build his side he'd like to see at the Dragons. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move into our next segment of the night, which is. He's sadly tonight. not with us tonight, but. I'm always worried about this shot. Well, what's he doing around the corner? Hey, what's yeah, he doing? It looks a bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> To get to do one. Yeah, so we don't have Muzzle with us tonight, but he has sent through who he thinks in his, um, would be a good bet to have for this weekend. So I'll just bring up what he's got. And here is his tips for the weekend. So, Okay, so he's gone Daniel Tipper anytime try scorer in the Roosters game against the Pampers. He's gone South Sydney to get their first win of the season. The big win, little win, 1 to 12 against the Bulldogs in the traditional Good Friday clash. He's going Kyle Felt to be an anytime try scorer in the, um, in the um, Queensland Derby, Broncos and the Cowboys. And in our game in Wollongong on Saturday, he's gone Ben Hunt to score at any stage in the contest. Jeez. Fair enough. Ben Hunt knows, how, knows his way to the try line. So, and um, all the proceeds. 440. Accessible. 460 um, juicy odds there. Yes, 460 is pretty good. All proceeds go to the um, family of League Foundation. And as Mazza would say, if you're going to have a bet, please gamble responsibly. And hopefully um, we have some luck this week with Mazza's multi. So get yeah. some, that's paying $69.05. Uh, but, but what you bet, that's, a little, that's pretty good odds. Okay, we'll now move into um, the rest of the round tips. So on Thursday night, so we've got probably the two form teams of the comp. We've got the Roosters taking on the Panthers. Um, Luke Keery returns from concussion for the Roosters, while Lindsay Collins is out with a hamstring injury. Um, Egan Butcher play, comes into the side. He, it's his first game of the year. For the Panthers, Nathan Cleary out for the month for a month with a hamstring injury, while back row Scott Sorensen also out with an injury. Former Raiders halfback Brad Schneider comes in for his first um, game for the Pampers. And Luke Garner comes into the back row. Maverick Guy, son of Penrith legend Mark, will make his debut off the bench. Nice. Cool. Big T, who are you tipping in this one? I think I've got to go to Roosters with Dan Nathan Cleary. Roosters are, are looking pretty good. Um, but I think, yeah, I think the Roosters might have the have the edge without Nathan Cleary. They brought in some young guy. What's his... Um, um, shoemaker or something, this, yeah, something like that anyway. Shoemaker or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I think I think the Roosters might touch him up. What do you think, Rob? I agree with my Maltese brother. I, I think Nathan Cleary is too big a loss. Um, to be honest with you, um, yeah, a lot, lot, lot of uh, responsibility in, in the uh, halfback coming in, and the Roosters, to be fair, I hate him with a passion, of course, but they've been going pretty good. So they look and just, good. just yeah. the side note, Hussein, Pen Penrith won't beat the eleven years in a row. <laughs> um, I'm going to go. Well, clearly, clear probably retired for eleven years in a row. <laughs> yeah, I think what the Panthers that? still have enough in them. Um, yeah, they've, fair they've, enough. they've been going. The record actually without Nathan in, in previously hasn't been too bad. Um, they just keep doing what they're doing. I think they'll they'll um. They can just edge out the Roosters. I mean, Roosters were good, but no one really looked at how bad South were either. So last no, week... Right, yeah. They have good depth, Penrith, don't they? They, they have good depth in their playing yeah. squad. So, so do yeah, the that, that's starting to run out like out now. In the last yeah, yeah. Four, four years, they've lost 21 players out of their top squad. But they're bringing their youngsters through. I'm keen to see how Maverick Guy goes. Son, son of, That'd be um, good, yeah. yeah. I, did, I did send Mark a message. Anyway, we'll move on to the next game. So, Good Friday, the traditional clash. 
the the last placed bunnies. The, who thought we'd be saying that after three rounds? The last placed bunnies taking on the Bulldogs. I'm um, South Starters favourites. Still Dean Hawkins at number seven. Um, Tom Burgess gets a start in the run on side. Michael Cheekham's on the bench as is Shaq Mitchell. While the Bulldogs are unchanged from their 32 0 win over the Titans. What do you reckon, Rob? Well, I'm liking what I'm seeing from the Bulldogs, but law of averages. I mean, South surely, surely have to, something has to change, something has to improve. Um, so I'm, I'm predicting South will come back and win, but I'm still liking what I'm seeing from the Bulldogs. I think there's improvement um, and passion in their team. Um, and obviously some of these new new plays, in addition with the other plays that have had uh, started in the last couple of years. There's only a bit of firepower to them, but, you know, just South, I so just, I don't know, something about it, I'd be shocked if they go um, four on the trot losses, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm predicting uh, South to win. Big T, you thinking the same, or will the Bulldogs keep oh. more misery on, on the bunnies? The Bulldogs play like they played last week, and I know the Bulldogs only played the Titans last week. Um I, I think the Bulldogs might might get up in this game. I don't think Hawkins is the halfback. He's 25. He should be he should be killing it by now. Um, he's not quite up to standard, I don't think. And Ilias is back in reserve grade, biding his time again, isn't he? Well, I think back in I think it was 1970s, Bobby McCarthy and all the it was a really great South team there. They finished last in the comp, full of. Um, you know, top line players, origin like players, like what they've got South to go up now. Um, they still finish last, so yeah. you know, could be a possibility that South are just um going downhill. And some of these players, like Katie and that, are maybe they've had their time they're getting older and father time's getting them, maybe. You know, I think they, so. I think South are getting grubbier. Um, yeah, they were a grubby side years ago. When they had Sam Burgess playing for him and the other two, three Burgess brothers, they were very um, grubby side. I they don't have that Latrell, anymore, though. Latrell, Latrell Mitchell and Cody Walker, they're the grubbiest players in the game. Um, yeah. And I think it's taken away It's taken away from, the, from their ability, ability to play because they're being so grubby. Um, they're too good a side to be down on the bottom, though. Look, you look at the players they've yeah. got in their side. But you've seen that years and years and years years ago, good sides did finish last. You know what I mean? Like, and had I all, did, the play, really, all the players in the world. Really, actually, funny you said that. I know about the grubby bit, but Ilias is um, he's just not being allowed to do his thing. He's not being allowed to as a halfback to try and run Cody the team. And, and, and the troll want to run the team. Yeah, they're too yeah. powerful. They're too domineering. It's a bit like Ben Hunt. You know what I mean? You, you get the, you get the five eight in, and is he going to? You know, let him trust him to let him do things, or is he going to do everything himself? Well, Latrell and Cody to me appear to say, Well, stuff you, Ilias. We're yeah. going to do what we're going to do. We're not going to give you a go type thing. That's so, what they've been lacking since Adam yeah. Reynolds left a couple of years ago. And yeah, well, Adam Reynolds had all the respect under he the, the show. Paramount have been doing that since the 80s, they've been looking yeah. for a halfback since the 80s. Um, Tulsa and Tollett and Stu Galbraith just didn't cut the cut the mustard, you know, like they found they found a good halfback in Moses now, but um yeah they've been looking for the that, that, yeah. There's not many good halfbacks out there to come across and if they are they're all in their thirties. Anyway, yeah. who are you tipping this one, Big T? Who's your tip? Um where are we South, South was it? South oh, South South South. South. I think the Bulldogs. Yeah, I, I just don't dogs. think where it gets I don't think we're, um, it gets any better for Souths. I think the Bulldogs all keep going where they left off against the Titans. I know, yeah, yeah I just said they only played the Titans, but it, Souths are really in a big hole at the moment, and I just don't see where they get out of it. No. Hey, Jesse, you're down at Albion Park, aren't you? Yeah. You get Tommy knocking on your door, mate. Tommy Burgess. <laughs> So Friday night, good for, it's a good Friday. Be a great night of footy. This one, these these derbies always deliver. It's the Broncos and the Cowboys. The Broncos, no no Reese Walsh. Adam Reynolds returns, but still no Payne Haas. 
Brendan Piakura out as well. Jaden Hunt, former Taylor. Dragon, will make his yeah. debut for the Broncos. And as you said, oh, Tristan right. Taylor comes into the side at fullback for the Broncos. And Corey Oates onto the bench for Martin Tapa. Oh, mm. Cowboys oh, yeah. are unchanged from their win against the Dragons, although Zach Laybutt returns in the centres for um, Tom Chester. Rob, who do you think in this one? I like what I see in the Cowboys. I like what I see with Chad Townsend. Um, man, this guy's matured as a, as a great, uh, good halfback. Uh, probably almost would be right up the top halfbacks in the game at the moment, I think. But something's burning in me to say that the Broncos um, might get the win. I don't know. It's just something about it. A um, little bit, a little bit of less expectation. Um, maybe the Cowboys, um, sorry to all us Dragons fans, had an easy win and maybe they might switch off and maybe it might be the Broncos' night. So um, picking the Broncos, maybe in a close one. Big T, you were the same as Rob or, or you think the Cowboys will make it four in a row to start the year? Well, I, I love Jeff Ryan and the Cowboys because we make sons of Cow- Cowboys supporter and we're just... <laughs> Wow, oh, we we attack each other every week. Doesn't matter who we're playing, but it's all it's all done in all in the best possible taste. Um, it's all done in the now. It's time for Patrick Carrigan to um, step up. Um, good player. He's a good player. He's a great player. Um, Love him, Dragons. Yeah, so would have, so would all our Dragons Dragon supporters. But I think it's time for Carrigan to step up. Um, but. I, I, I do think the Cowboys in a close one, I think. Yeah, I think too. The, um, Reach Walsh is a massive out for the Broncos. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and then Payne Haas and leading in the forward pack. He's a big out too. Cowboys, while, yes, they haven't been they haven't been like a, a complete – they haven't played the complete game they would have liked all year, but they've been winning games, and, and, and I think that'll keep them in good stead. The Broncos – just don't look the same side as they were last year at the moment. Um, is it Suncorp, Jesse? This is Suncorp, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I think they'll go right down to the wire, though. But I, think the, I think the Cows will win by about six because the, the Broncos will miss West Ross's impact and attack. And Payne Haas, they're missing him big time. They're already missing yeah, him. He's out for another six weeks, so that's that's him out. Yeah. Some big players out, isn't there? When you look at the long list of injuries, have you said that? Every team, I have seen the list. Every team has got a a top line player. We're the only team that has got no top line players. So we're the only team that has everyone fit. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, what's the next one? Titans. Well, next next one's Dragons and Manly. So we'll 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 get to that last. Um, Yeah, it's the Queensland derby again. The Titans and the Dolphins. Big T. So the, um, I'll just say who, who, who's in and out. So Jaden Campbell is back at fullback. Um, David Fafita has been named on the extended bench, so he could be a late inclusion. Um, for the Dolphins, Ray Stone returns from concussion, knocking Jared Wallace off the bench. Um, Cody Nikarima is good to go after that concussion against the Dragons. Big, yep. He'll partner Katoa in the halves. Big out for the um, big out, big out for the Titans. Tino Fata, Sumala Aoi, Egon, see you later, 12 months, ACL. Um, he's a huge loss for him. Um, I just pray for Blaze that he doesn't do anything tragic to himself. Um, but um, love you, Blaze. Um, we feel for you, man. We know your pain. We know your pain, yes. Um, I can't see the Titans winning the game. Um I think the Dolphins at Seabus will be too strong for them. Same for you, Rob. You think the Dolphins will be too good for the Titans? Yeah, look, I think Titans are the old West Tigers. To be honest with you, I, I, I see them now as clearly being the spooners, uh, wooden spooners, um, sadly. But um, I just don't think they're, they're just saying they cut the mustard, mate, to be honest with you. And even Forum was back last week and against the Dogs. Um, hardly made any difference to have your crucial spine play there. So, um, yeah, I think they're gone. Pretty well. I'd hate to write off a team, but you know, if, if any of our Australian sports are over a spoon, I don't think we have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> I think Titans are the, are the team. Um, so yeah, so definitely 
Dolphins for me. And as Big T mentioned, Tino Fasol Malawi. No, gone for the life. season. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, he, he tries, out. tries his guts in every game. And captain's leads, for example, and he's running 10, 15 metres at a time. So you, you take a prop out like that, like an AFB, you know, Adam Fennell Blake, who runs 10, 15 metres out of your team, it's a massive lock. Every hit up, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think we're unanimous in this one. I think Dolphins by plenty. They'll continue off where they left off against us, and this could be this could be fifty. This could be fifty if the Titans don't smarten up. Plus, Wayne Wayne Bennett's good at seeing the weakness from the week before in a team to to be able to isolate what you know he can prey on with his team as well too. So, if, good case if that you, way. If if you want to laugh, look up Dwayne Bennett. Um, Dwayne Bennett. Dwayne he's Bennett. He's up. very very funny. <laughs> Um, he's, a he's, a, he's a Dolphins man, but um, very, very oh, funny. Okay. Very, very funny. Okay, so we'll move on to the next game. Um, Sunday afternoon in Auckland. This is this TV game on Sunday. The Warriors and, and it's the Knights. Um, so for the Warriors, Tane Tulpiki is out with concussion. RTS is the new fullback for the Warriors. And Adam Pompey comes into the centres. Dylan Walker is back from an ankle injury onto the bench. And Wade Egan has been named at hooker. He's a good chance to return from an elbow injury. <laughs> For the Knights, Leo Thompson is out with suspension, which means Daniel Saifidi goes into the run-on side. Brody Jones comes onto the bench. And Jack Cogger retains his spot at halfback following the Knights' two-point win over the Melbourne Storm. Warriors or Knights, Rob. Oh, look, I'm definitely on the Warriors uh, bandwagon. I think they'll be too strong. Um, Big T, we're talking before about crowd support. Well, you never get, you, you get such great crowd support there. The drums oh, will be, yeah. be going on. They're loud as well, too. I think that's what we need the Dragons, back to the old days of Cogra was a packed house. But, um, yeah, Warriors in some of these players that are in. And, yeah, I mean, Newcastle really just made it through against a very weak in Melbourne Storm, right? That plays out the spine, the half. Um, so, yeah, I, I just can't see the Warriors. And the Warriors are unlucky, weren't they? Uh, was it the week last week, the week before, the one point? I bet the Raiders last yeah, week, guess, yeah. Yeah, like the Raiders. The Storm, they were very unlucky. So, yeah, so, I mean, I, I just can't see any other, unless the Warriors are way off, mate. You know what I mean? So, Warriors to me. Another minor missed, Miranda Nicore returns on the bench too. Um, oh, wow. Well. He's mean, back off. He's recovered from a foot injury, so that's a good in for the Warriors as well. I've got some big ins there. Um, big T, you think the Wars yeah. at home or all the Knights? I, 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 I think the, the Warriors, um, they've had one win where they beat the Raiders at home. So, well, I was actually at Christchurch. It wasn't even at home. So, um, they've, they've, got to, they've got to start looking like a premiership side and they've got to start looking like a premiership side now. Um, they've got out to Leeds and they've let the Leeds go. I wouldn't let them walk my dog. So, um, yeah, I think I think the Wars are going to start start really turning it around. Yep. And Rod Juvasashek going back to his um, original position, that's a, a big move for him. Yeah, 100%. And then they've got Nickel Clock start to come back in a couple of weeks too. That's a, a, bigger, a bigger boost for them. Yeah, I, I'm more of the same. I think I'm going to go the Warriors at home. The Knights, yeah, as Rob said, they were lucky to get past an uh, understrength Melbourne Storm. Um, I wouldn't say it was a great performance from the Knights. Very scrappy. Um, and Kalen Ponga really single-handedly won at that game for them. That's what you expect your best players to do. I think the Warriors, they'll, they'll be a big crowd over there. Sunday afternoon game in, in New Zealand. Um, I think the Warriors will be just too strong. I think they could win by a lot. And yeah, as I said, um, you, you're watching the uh, Mad Dragons podcast, proudly sponsored by Complete Wear Solutions, our major sponsor. Um, go see them at Six Commerce Drive, Lake Illawarra, for your warehousing and industry needs. Go see Jeff and the team today. Bring them up at 0417 as well. Um, and big team. Big T, I've got to say thank you so much for them sponsoring us as well too, but we've got to excuse yeah. the senior citizen yawns. We're both getting tired, mate. I know. We're old. 
We're old. Yeah. <laughs> we're, nearly, we're nearly at the finish line. So a few more minutes. Um, big game on, on Sunday night. So um, two losers from last week, the Sharks taking on the Raiders. So the Sharks, a lot of big outs here. Dale Finucan out with a face injury. Royce Hunt with a calf. Toby Rudolph, ankle injury. Joining Braden Hamnioli with a hamstring injury. Kale Iroh comes into the side for the Sharks. C.S. Sefatelico goes to the back row. Jack Williams returns to the bench. Billy Burns retains his spot. Donnie's boy, he'll be happy about that. Tuku Hatapua comes onto the bench for the Sharks. So a lot of new faces there for the Sharks. The Raiders are basically unchanged from their lost, narrow loss to the, to the Warriors. Um, Big T, who do you like in this one? Um, oh, Sharks have lost so many players. Um, and they would have got absolutely, absolutely smashed today or this week at training. Um, like I said, they made 16 errors last week. They couldn't hold the ball. Nico Highs kicked the ball out three times on the full. Um, 30 missed tackles. That's, that's Dragons form, 30 missed tackles. Um, Raiders are one of those teams that grind and grind and grind and grind. Um, Sticky's got them going well. Yeah, Sticky has got them going well. But at Shark Park, I think the Sharks will um, get over the top. Was it Andrew? <laughs> you, got a, you got a message for you, Big T. <laughs> That's me, mate. That's me. Tony Owens, the Saints. <laughs> A wind of Saints. A wind of Saints. Go, go, go. Anyway, Rob, do you think more of the Thank same? Thank you, Andrew. Um, <laughs> you is, it an park? Park? is it an animal park? Is it an animal park? Sorry, shark park. <laughs> shark park. Um, <laughs> look, I mean, they might make a little bit of difference to the Sharks um, to not make it sort of lopsided, but Big T's right. There's so many outs there. Uh, for the team, and you, you got young Iro coming in the centres. Um, yeah, the forwards. The forwards are going to be the weak, the, the, the weaker for it. They got a lot of forwards out, and they they usually dominate with their props. Their their long bay jail props. Oh, sorry, their props. Um, so yeah. So to me, um, I think the Sharky's going to go down at home. You beauty. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'm going to go with you, Rob. I think the Raiders. Um, they look good to start the year. They've been in every game. They were unlucky to go down to the Warriors last week, and they're going so well. Corey Horsburgh can't even find a spot in the team. Big That's tips, right, yeah. Big yeah. T, one of your favourites. Some people are he's some people favorite. for the spoon. So, right? so Stinky's got him. has got him on fire. So he's yeah, that, you must be going well if you can't find a spot. Really the team. Yeah, and I, I think with that, all the ducks out. What's his name? Gonna, Smithy from England. He looks Smithy, good. Smithy's keeping Osbury out of the side. Smithy's and that Zach Hosking has been one of the players of the competition. No, I have. Well, I did hear now, apparently, and, and it's on a TV commercial, that Sticky's relaxing a little bit more and he's actually liking, liking the soft serve ice cream from Maggots. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Changing his ways. You see, on a real dedicated diet, but you he's know, getting soft in his old he's, age. He's letting go. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Raiders on the road. Yeah. And then the final game of the round, Easter Monday special. It's the Eels, with no Mitchell Moses. Yeah. Out, out for two months with a broken foot. Um, Sevo's back from suspension. Bailey Simonson on the reserves bench. A new 5'8", Blaze Talungi, the debutant from last Sunday. He's the 5'8", Jalen Brown moving to halfback. That's a shock move. And well, the rest of the side remains intact. For the Tigers, they are unchanged from their win over the... Um, actually, they're not unchanged. Ashu Kapoa comes on at the bench. Um, Alex Twal out for, with concussion. Um, Bud Sullivan off the bench again with Galvin and Caesar as the preferred halves. Can the Tigers make it two from two, Rob? Oh, look, I think I agree with Big T um, that... Um, Tigers definitely played better, but I think Sharks made a lot of mistakes. If you look at the stats, um, and Parramatta obviously um, had a good win over Manly, um, even though it was a bit of conjecture with um, uh, wasn't it Jake uh, Jake Droge, um with a try, but um, 
Yeah, I just think Parramatta, and I don't see Dylan Brown moving to halfback as a massive uh, issue uh, these days with 5'8 and halfback. Um, I think you might take on the responsibility. And, um, yeah, I, I think Paramount, Paramount might just be too strong. Um, but, yeah, um, I still see an improved effort from the West Tigers, but I think Paramount will get the chocolates. You going the same way, Big T? Yeah, Mitchell Moses is a huge loss for him. Um, the young bloke coming in, he had a great game last week. Um, but, yeah. Um, Dylan Brown, he'll still do the same job from seven that he does from six. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think Parramatta again, it's going to, it's going to be a close round. Um, this this this, this week, um, yeah, some of these games will go either way. I mean, oh, there's a that's exactly right. The that's the same, as the, same as the first week, seven yeah. out of the eight favorites lost. Yeah, so it's one of those competitions where you've got. You've got your top four, top five teams, and then everybody else can beat anybody else on their day. Yeah, um, um, yeah maybe not the Titans or the Dragons, but um, shh, don't tell anybody that. And you like you like Parramatta or, or the Tigers? You like Parramatta? Um, I think oh, I think Parramatta a close one, a close one. Parramatta combat. I'm going to go the opposite way. I think the Tigers will be gel. Um, over the moon with their performance last week and i think they'll be brimming with confidence people don't understand how much moses is out for the um top for the eels that is a massive awesome. out he's he sets up all their plays and, and kicks and they're yeah, really gonna miss that and they've got an inexperienced five eight there um so I maybe think the just in the top i think i think um mitchell all good and um the king the king Gutho. They've got to step up. King Gutho has got to step so Jesse, up. They, they, they have to think, step up. Do you think the church hymn sheet at the end of the game that the West Tigers had, seeing the, the team sell the church hymn sheet... Looks like Benji's tied up my words. For the, ...for the victory? I, I did like to say... In, in, Bud had, you know, Benji had his arm Bud, around Bud. Yeah, I thought that was a very nice thing as an extra Dragons player. So Benji yeah. had his arm around Bud, helping him out. But... um. But the Tigers song isn't an old time classic where the Oh When the Saints is an old time classic. And um, yeah. everybody in the world knows Oh When the Saints. Not everyone Not in the world knows know the Tiger. Tiger. Tigers. No, nobody knows it. <laughs> I have the Tiger. Yeah, only select few. Yeah, I reckon the Tigers. But we'll move on to the important game of the weekend. And that's our game on Easter Saturday against Manly in Wollongong. I'll open with you, Big T. What do you think is going to happen? Are we going to break our two-match losing streak? Um, well, Manly don't play well in Wollongong. We know that. They've won two out of the last ten games, um, stretching back to 2003. The, they, won, they won last year, and then 2003 was the last time they won before that. So hopefully we can we can uh, grow off the back of that, knowing that Manly don't like to travel. Um, I get Manly speed um, at Y. I think that's going to be a, a, a major a major talking point for us. Um, yeah, we've got to stop stop the ball at Cherry Evans and Brooks, and our forwards have to go forward. But I think mainly by eight, um, we'll possibly we'll possibly get one or two tries. Um, hopefully, Rava can start his start his um, try scoring for twenty twenty four. He hasn't scored one for a few now, so um, I think Manly, Manly by 10. And who, who do you think is going to get some tries for us? Uh, I think, uh, hopefully Rava will get a try sometime during the game. And I'm sure if we continue with to put the bomb up for that Glamax, he'll, he'll score one. Um, law of averages, he's got to score one. So, Rob? Lomax, Lomax and Rava. Over to you, Rob. We'll be in it for the first part of the game. If you want to call the first part 10, maybe 15 minutes. And then if we fall to our uh, usual way where we fall off, uh, I think Manly is just too powerful all over the field. <coughs> um, and we've got some players coming back uh, that, you know, like or even Sele is coming back, hasn't, is lacking match fitness. Um, and, yeah, I... 
It's going to sound really weird, but I need us to win before I can believe we can win. I know it sounds silly, but um, yeah, but I don't think Manly's a team for us to to get that win. Um, sadly, I'm predicting 20 plus. I think Manly will put on us. I really don't see us improving that much. Um, you know, we got beaten by the Dolphins, and then we were beaten by the Cowboys. And I think Manly are right up there, um, obviously, with the top teams. So, yeah, I, I think Donny, uh, our great captain, was right that maybe um, was a bit sugar-coated us being the Titans, who I think are going to be the Wooden Spooners in the first round. And maybe maybe things are coming back to roost a bit now. So we'd have to see a massive turnaround of them playing for the whole 80 minutes and not falling away um, in the game. And, yeah, Jesse, without me talking too much more, um, like what you said before, mate, when a try goes in, not being eight or not, yeah. heads go down. And, you know, and even when you're up, we you might even be up. And then a try goes in against us, all of a sudden it's, it's, they give up, know, yeah. down and yeah. we give up. Yeah. It's almost like, oh, is this last season? And I'm going to lose the game again. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a bit infectious. It's a trend. I mean, I, I guess 84 points in two matches conceded. I mean, it's a shitload of points. So, we've got to, there's areas we're going to have to fix up there because Manly are going to score tries against us if, we, yeah. if we're not going to defend well. Apparently, Flano's um, worked on that with the team this week. Hopefully, he does that for the rest of the week as well. Um, well, Flano, Flano worked with Manly, right? So, Flano should know the insides and outs of Manly. Um, being yeah. there for, for, for a while. So that should be a help to us at least anyway, we hope. Anyway, oh, I think more of the same will happen. If, if if we play anything like we did against the Cows last Saturday, we're going to get pumped by probably 20-plus again. Um, we've got to hold the ball. Well, we've got to hold the ball, yeah. We've got to be more resilient yeah. in defence. We've got to um, not do the short dropouts. We've got to start well. We've got to learn how to... Um, limit those errors those dumb errors and the, our discipline has got to be a lot better as well um i think we've got to start well and get some early points if we don't do that it could be a long night in we'll go on saturday i think well, well jesse just picking up on a point you said before mate um with ben hart and i'm not only against ben hart i know he's been our best player or one of our best players for a long time now but you said changing the kicking game up. What's wrong about well, why just put the bomb up all the time? And why not try and kick deep towards the in goal line? Kick for touch, you know I mean? yeah. to get to get field position. You know, like deep right or left hand side towards the touch line and the goal line. You know, end up to, to push the team back. Even if you kick it on the fourth tackle or whatever, or third tackle, just to get some momentum. I mean, you are right. I mean, I don't know what the stats are. Donnie's a stats man, but the amount of time that Ben Hunt bombs it. Um, it's got to be he's bombing the ball more time than he's trying to kick for field position. Unless he's going for a 40-20. So, yeah, so it just seems to be a bomb. And that seems to be the main That's kicking. Well, I like how they tried the, um, the chip for Loma, uh, chip for um, um, Sloan. Sloan. Yeah. yeah, it's a great idea. Uh, it's a great idea. If he can get that ball, if he can, he can get that room service bounce like Blacklock got, he'll score every time. Well, Chalk and, uh, used to do it, remember? With, with that's Blacklock. exactly right, yeah. You've got to go back to those moves. Um, yeah. If we're not scoring any other way, the chip kick or the grab we're gonna have a long. We're going to have a long night, yeah. Yeah, I know. You've got to change it up. We've, we've got to do something different. I mean, God, we can see it 84 points. So if we, we've got to do something different to score more points as well, too. Um, so you, yeah. you look at Manly's wins. All those wins, they've leaked points. So there are weaknesses there. They're still leaking yeah. a lot of points. Yeah. So there's weaknesses there. But I guess to be fair too, to who would them. Manly play? Who are they play? The Roosters? They play Roosters. three quality Aramata. games. Aramata. Yeah. And South. And South. So, who are yeah, so, Well, yeah, South are running last. But obviously they, they had they, two hard they, games in a row. It was a Manly. top game, though. That, that was, a, well, was a top game. South against Manly. Parramatta, yeah. Yeah, and that, that game was probably the best game I've seen this year. The Parramatta Manly game that they Manly were up 14 0. Parramatta came back in it, Manly took the lead again, and then it went down right down to the 80th minute. High what quality about game. Speed, speed and the intensity that's the thing that gets me with Manly. The, the speed and the intensity is uh, at another level. 
and obviously with Parramatta as well. So there's another thing. We're going to have to be faster. We're going to have to be more intense, harder, you know. So there's a lot to have to go right. Domination. Anyway, I'll go with my tip. So, yeah, Manly by 20. I'll think I'll, I'll go Lomax for a try. He'll get the first try. We'll, um, any stage of the game, I'm going to go Jacob Little from Dummy R. He'll, he'll sneak over from Dummy R. But yeah, I think man, they'll be far too good. I'm hopefully, I'm hopefully the guys can prove me wrong. I'd love to see it because yeah. times in the past when I've tipped against us, we've come out and and, and put a shot. We've come out and played well. So hopefully they can um, do that this week. But um, yeah, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, so, certainly it's only a short plant panel, but um. Thank you to for, for Rob and Big T to coming on, and also well, thank you to the important ones turned up. <laughs> yeah, the, old, <laughs> the oldest ones out of the brigade, yeah. the A team. We're, we're <laughs> troopers, mate. We're battlers. We're battlers. And thank you to Adam coming on early in the show too. That oh, was yeah, great, great to have him on, and um, always awesome. good having our um, opposition guest on. Next week we'll have um, the nighttime podcast. Dean, who come on late last year when we played Newcastle. Special, special, so a special time, time of behind them in lines next, next week. That'll be at 9.30. Um, we'll start off a little bit different next week and it, behind them in lines will be a bit later to accommodate for their own podcast. So 9.30 for behind any lines next week with Big T. Um, and we'll be back on Sunday to hopefully um, review a Dragons win over the Seagulls. Oh, yeah. Until then, come on, Dragons fans. Fire up. Fire up. Red V's a part of me. Love yous all. Love yous all. You're fantastic. And Margo. And Margo. Margo. I love Margo. Yeah. I do. <laughs> I do. Campbell Township. Tony and the MP crew will do their very best. Did not to get on our breast with a red bee on our chest. The Mad Dragon podcast is a sheep of camaraderie. Never getting rats down rabbit holes in the land of the big red bee. And so I can we speak the tales of the truth is our dream. The Mad Dragon podcast, and we buy our tea. Good night, everybody. Come on, Dragons fans, fire up! Ha, ha, ha.